Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Miami Heat Beat Post Game Show. I'm your host, Giancarlo Navas. And with me today, we got Pablo, the intern. We have... Can't hear you, dude. Can't hear Pablo, but it's okay. We got the Saucy <laughs> Takes, Coach Lou. What is going on, everybody? In what I believe to be Defiant Ravens paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> is this a protest for the Super Bowl? Nah, uh... I had I had a dirty shirt on before I got on. <laughs> it wasn't a dirty; it's a sleeve shirt, but you know it's a little wrinkly. And so you know it's, it's one of the comfy shirts, man. So I had to run to the room during the countdown. Hello, you guys hear me now? Probably hear don't pop. do that. Don't do that. Well, that's the most. <laughs> you're going to jail. Intern. You're going. To, you're going to jail. That was the most intern ass shit I've ever seen in my life. You're in jail. Why? Why would you mic test in the middle of introduction? Poor guy. Amen. You just you go into private chat and you tap on the mic and you be like, "Did you guys hear that?" Or I'll go to you to mic check. Why did you think that it was the appropriate time to mic check while I'm talking to Lou about his dirty shirt? I'm just sad about Haywood. Bro. It's not dirty. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just sad about Haywood. You're man. in time out. We have the great Shabon radiant as ever. Hello, people. It's the light. My light is too bright, actually. But hello. Oh you're great. You're glowing. We're this glowing. Was great. They're glowing. Everyone's happy except for Haywood Highsmith and Pablo. The Heat Man. have a wire to wire win today against the Orlando Magic, who are a good team and, and in particularly a good defense. So for them to put up this kind of performance against the number five defense in the league, that's impressive. And yeah. they do so decisively. They do so dominantly. They do so getting contributions from. Practically everybody who played real minutes, Jimmy 23, Caleb Martin had a stretch in that game where I was like, are you, are we so back? Bam. <laughs> to open the half, just relentless. Yes. Tyler Hero played within his role. Terry Rozier, his best all around game with the heat, 58% from the field since he joined the team. Hawk has looked most informed that he's been since the injury. Josh Richardson continues yeah. his both ends play. K Love doing K Love things and Duncan Robinson just all over the place doing all the cutting and all the little things. Um, Lou, I'm gonna let you start, man. Wh where who were you most impressed with today? And we could go around the room with who we were most impressed with today because I think there's a lot of choices. This was a great team win. Who didn't kick our ass? Let's go. Who didn't <laughs> kick our? Yeah, I, I'm most impressed with uh, honestly, it's got to be Jimmy Butler, man. The, the the little train that could, man. Today, uh, even even though his bunnies were a little bit suspect at times, even my dad was known. He's like, damn, I think I got better knees at 52. Uh, he was, you know, he played within his role, had that edge to him, stopped the run when it looked like it was going to get bad. Six for nine, ultra efficient. Um, the TOs were a little high, but just did a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, eight rebounds, eight assists. Uh, I thought his defense was very good today. He felt like he was locked in on Franz damn near the whole game. Uh, so it's got to be Jimmy, man. Uh, this, you know, this team runs on two people. It's Duncan and Jimmy. I, mean, I just said that because, you know, America runs. Anyways, on to the next. <laughs> JJ, JG says February he'd be loading up. Yeah. yeah. He'd be, be loading up. Bon, who are you most impressed with today? I am. I want to take Terry. But mm. he's like one of what will be like the kind of core ish of people. So I'm going to go on this little bit outer on the fringe, um, but still uber important to what they do and what they did last year. I really enjoyed Caleb's game today. I think that there is a lot to be said about Terry's insertion with the group and how it has helped shrink and kind of define both 
um, Josh's role and the areas in which now you need Caleb to be effective. And I thought a lot of his baseline rip, all of those things were were back. Um, the the dunk that he pulled from like the charge circle, that was like the most explosive dunk we've yes. seen him have in a long time. And, you know, it, it's little, but he's been having a bunch of, you know, rim grazers. So to see him feel, you know, kind of uh, what what's hopefully, you know, that much better in his body and just will continue to kind of be. And then the shot, like if the shot can continue to like just stay, you know, where it is. I think they only credited him for one of three from three. But I swear he had two. I thought he had the one. This man and foot the on the line. Corner. Foot on the line, King. He was, he was no, two for two with foot on the line today. No, I counted. That's how you know Caleb's back. Yeah, long <laughs> you two king. the longest two king. Um, but yeah, just just happy to see him um kind of just coming back into form. Uh, by the way, I want to shout out Bronx Joker resubscribed uh, last 16 months at Miami Heat with diarrhea offense gets it runs after this constipation. So <laughs> we we take those. Daywalker 242 gave out a community sub. Thank you guys for the support and helps us keep the lights on. We love you guys. Uh, incarcerated intern Pablo, who are you most impressed with today? <laughs> I'm going to go with Terry. Just, just because Terry look like the Terry we trade like he traded for and he was hitting his step backs he was working the pick and roll he was finishing at the basket he was he was still playmaking he 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 just looked like what we what the heat traded him for and I'm I'm just really impressed that he shot 58 percent I think it's the first time he sh- the second time he shoots over 50 in the in the seven games he's been here so if he can continue uh, working like that that is gonna make this we're gonna score 120 points a lot more often than just a hundred. I mean, they listen. I feel bad for Haywood because you know he exits the lineup, and all of a sudden they have Indiana's offense. <laughs> uh, so man, that, that's hurt because I'm a big Haywood guy. But I, I want to give mine to to Jay Rich because yeah, I think w- I Alf and I in particular have been really hard on him, and I want to give take him. Some of that. I was like, I was going to say. I, I mean, Lou, Lou, you too. We've I, all I been haters. I, I was gonna say you can't keep I, me out of that. I, I, I felt, I'll take some of that. I'll take my bumps too, shit. And I want to give him love because if I'm gonna be hard For on sure. him, I want to give him love when he plays. Well. And he's been, I think, in this like little. They're four and one. Yes. Yeah, they're they're three and one in their last four. Even in that Clipper game, I think that we talked about it. There was a lot of stuff that was positive, and I, I just think his level of play has been good on both ends. I think he's shirred up some of the stuff on defense that we've been complaining yep. about, and yes. really on offense. The stuff going to the rim is impressive. I think he goes with a lot of athleticism. It's like sometimes surprises me. He kind of works above the rim at times, which is nice to see from him. And I love that guy, you know, and I'm hard on him because I like him and I think he can be better. And I'm happy because he was oh, he was one of my favorite guys to cover. And I'm always going to have like kind of a soft spot for him because he was really like the first guy in the locker room I vibed with like that. And so I, I always root for him. So if I'm going to be hard on him, I also want to show him love. So for for you know doing it on both ends. And Josh has had a what'd you say, Pablo? Ever since Alf Alf came on the show that one day. Oh, uh, Jay Rich has been playing good since that day. No, yeah. he's had a like he's had a good stretch. He's had a functional, confined, but like starring in that confinement type of stretch. Absolutely. I, so, I definitely I definitely feel oh not to catch you. I definitely no, feel no, like no. since uh it feels like he's playing a lot more within his, like, you know, like uh, Mon said, yes. within his role. Like, he's barely touching the ball unless it's to shoot, which is all I've been asking for. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's all everybody's been, because we realize he 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 tends to over dribble at times, but he's been really good. And I was just thinking about it today. I was like, he's like that annoying guy who just somehow always gets to 10 to 13 points some way or another. Like, the other team's probably like, why is Josh Richardson giving us 13 on like eight shots yeah. today? But lately that's been the case. And uh, considering, you know, the much needed scoring, it's been appreciated. It's yeah. definitely been appreciated. He's been, he's been just active. And I think that like what you said is true. They don't have him bringing the ball up as much, which right. I think helps him just buddy stand on the wing. And I like that. He's kind of more on the wing than the corner. Cause I think that that's just mm-hmm. an easier kind of drive for him because when he he's actually good at attacking closeouts and i like him there and and he waits and he's patient and i think he picks the spots well i also like the mid-range jumper for him this season i think when he kind of gets to that pull up or that little turnaround i think that's been really successful even off one leg 
I think that like kind of the the ba- the off balance shots that he's taken this season, even even early in the season, I, I thought were really good. So it's just man, I'm just happy that he's playing well, and you know, just just he's he's great. Think, so oh, I was gonna say, I just think that since since they stopped relying on him as much as they did in the beginning of the season, he's just been playing better. Yeah. So like he's just letting the game come to him, and then he he's producing. The defense is like it, it's getting there. It's not. I don't think it's as bad as it was like the first couple of months of the season, but his offense for sure has been the most improved part. He's not like, he's not like taking super important shots, but he's getting open shots and hitting them. Since that Nick game, they've shown something on defense that yes, I think has a little life. And I think it started actually, and it's funny that I'm going to say this and to be honest with you, the, the show should be about offense today, but I want to give the defense a little love before we do like the heavy lifting on offense. Sure. That that Celtic game, they started to switch again, and it looked mm-hmm. really bad. And they got fucking blasted for it. And then they got blasted for it against in New York. And I, it took them a couple games, but you saw. I mean, they came out in man, switching pick and roll, everything, and you saw them aggressive. They were felt, and they were physical. And I think this also goes back to when Spo started them doing the press in the Phoenix game it kind of gave them a little bit of urgency, a little bit of life. And it's like, hey, you guys need to have a little bit of purpose with what you're doing. You are just existing on a basketball court. I'm gonna, And I, I think that if, if they really turn this season around, especially on defense, that's one move. That and going back to switching, but, but in particularly the press, is one move that I'm going to look at. And, I, and I'm going to think, like, I really feel like that. Such a small game time decision thing. I think changed their season because it, it was like you have to have like and Bond, you could probably speak to this as a player. Like you just can't like mindlessly go back on defense. You have a fucking job to do the second that ball gets brought into play. And you yeah. have it's an active job. And I think that that kind of reignited a little bit of that kind of physicality, that dog in them. And I think that's a great call out. Like the reinsertion of some urgency and just like immediate intentionality the ball gets taken out your own ball or whatever and then and you also can't loaf back so yeah you're in a press but there's that's that doesn't excuse you for jogging back Mm -hmm. um and now you're coming back and you have to like flow into like actual like good matchups and not just you know kind of meandering in some transition just getting loose so I, i i really like that you said that and i would certainly agree lou and they're switching i think has kind of found its footing I thought it, it was getting there, and I, I think the Clipper game, I mean, the zone was really kind of effective in the Clipper game. I think that Coop ended up tweeting, I think the Clipper scored 1.03 points per possession, which is, like, pretty okay, but, you know, kind of against a team that was torching them at one point, you know, I think you take that. But their man against the Clippers was good, and I, I think today you kind of saw how that extended, you know, into what we are today. Yeah, they, they're doing a, a lot better job of containing drives and yeah. sending – um help like i think the biggest takeaway in my opinion from the last couple stretch of games since that team meeting it's been the help at the nail is back it's it's so simple when you see two things that's when you know they're locked in it's jimmy helping at the nail or whoever it is but you know jimmy is the, the the main proponent of that and kevin love taking charges the defense is clicking two charges today from kevin love Jimmy had three steals. One was in the nail. Terry's been very good helping in the yes. nail. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. when people are posting up. Caleb is doing a better job of that. Like Josh Richardson recently has been doing a better job of that. It's just the the intent of actually forcing a pass out of the post, but a pass that you're already pre-rotating to. So it's yes. it's been a lot of that to it, but their defense has definitely been clicking. I don't even think the switching as much because we know what Bam is on the perimeter. But uh, even when he's been staying home, uh, had a block today, staying home, I, you know, th- the switching was sometimes necessary, but it's not obligatory like it used to be. I just so think it's- it gets people into gear similar to like the – because I think with the, with the drop I, – I think the drop has a couple problems where – your your ball handlers get caught behind screens and i just they're not the best screen navigators and mm-hmm. it puts it kind of i think it stresses bam a little bit and i also think that like 
I think guys got complacent with it. And I think with switching, there's a bit of urgency. And unfortunately, they just need they just need a fucking fire up their they ass. Need a kick in the ass. Yeah, so <laughs> they, they gotta find a dog in them again. Bro, yeah, since, I mean, if you really think about it, since Josh got benched is when this kind of turn started. Josh got benched and he's been really good ever since. And sometimes, bro, you just need a wake up call. <laughs> yeah. The nail help too. It's different, like having the nail help already kind of there and present and then kind of closing back out, but in a contained way rather than like being closer to your man and like the digging, like the old laying that they sometimes like get some good stuff on, but then some kinds, you know, kind of don't. Um, so yeah, I, that's that's really good too, like you said, the just kind of being there, but being there like with more urgency too and just like more um, like fortitude. And then like Josh defensively, you know, maybe not the on-ball stuff that, you know, we kind of hope wants to, you know, get back mm -hmm. up to speed. But I thought his his doubling and, like, the timing of the one, the strip that he had, um, where it's he just, like, strip. yeah, he just comes in and clamps it. Like, that's, that's super great patience and waiting for the ball to present itself and not, you know, reaching and going for fouls. Like, the the minutia of some of their defensive elements are are ramping back up. I, okay. I think – Go ahead, Pablo. Uh, I was going to say – uh. The two Kevin Love charges, I think those are the two charges we've had since trading Kyle Lowry. I just wanted to. I don't think we. Yeah, Terry took it. one last game. Yeah, Terry took one last. That's game. true. He did. Then that was the first one. But Kevin Love taking it's, two. It's definitely been our first multi-charge game in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Thank God it was at home too. This the home crowd loves charges. I, I've never <laughs> seen a crowd love a charge the way that Miami <laughs> loves a charge. So part of the stuff at the nail, I think, guys, is like they. They're loading up a lot harder on the on the strong side of the ball, which has kind of always been an mo of their defense, and I think they were they were stretched a little bit. So I think part of that is they're they've kind of reoriented their geometry on the court, and so that's that's like one thing. And I think the emphasis on that is they they know that they have guys that are going to get beat off the dribble, so you got to send that help early. And make mm -hmm. sure that that doesn't get into the paint, right, Bond? Because mm -hmm. if not, they don't have like they don't have the big guys to, to contest and come help. And Bam's on the perimeter. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, sending it early and like being there, and then the closeout rather than being you know preemptively worried about the closeout and the nail and the the lane help being you know kind of the secondary focus. Because, right, like you said, they know that they have guys who are going to be. So, again, forcing um, forcing themselves into some liveliness kind of at the second and third levels. So that's that's um, that's um pretty big. So let's talk about the offense because we've talked a lot about the defense. I just wanted to give the defense a little love because I think that – and I've said a lot, like, if their season turns, it's going to be on the back of their defense. That's going to be the most yes. consistent thing. Their offense is going to come and go. They had a great shooting night tonight. If they shoot 28% tomorrow against the, the Spurs, no one is surprised. But yeah. the thing that can carry is effort and you know defensive intensity. So Always. let's talk about let's talk about their offense today because boy, 40 point quarter, especially in the fourth, which Lord knows that they've Lord knows that they've needed that. You get you get an explosion, and they responded after kind of a lackluster end to the to the first half. Magic mm -hmm. get magic make it a game. And I think Miami responding the way that they did is incredible. It's enormous. It shows you that, okay, they got punched in the mouth and they punch back. And that's kind of a little moxie that we haven't seen out of them. They get punched in the mouth and then they fucking fall apart. So it's kind of nice to see that. <clears throat> Some numbers from today in the half court, Miami, 102 offensive rating in the half court. That is absolutely unheard of for them. So, and, and it, it wasn't like a fucking put back central game for them. It was just straight up half court offense for them. Um, in trans, you know, in transition, they were really good. They got out 16% of their possessions were in transition, which is really good for them. And they were 193 offensive rating in transition. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, Lou, I'll, I'll let you start it off. I'll, 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 I'll let you start us off here. How much of this is just Terry Rozier getting to the rim, forcing rotations, and things are working? Um, a little bit, but I think in general, it's just intentionality. Like, they're actually, like, so inserting, you know, Rozier, but not just Rozier. Now you're adding Caleb to that starting five. 
And it's no discredit to Highsmith, but you have somebody else who can put the ball on the deck after a closeout. So when you have, you know, the driving and kicking of Jimmy, of uh, Terry, you know, what better, like he's like, realistically, Caleb Martin's probably our best guy attacking closeouts. Mm -hmm. So it just opens up everything. So as Terry is getting more comfortable in this pick and roll, uh, not just for himself, but knowing when to get off of it, which is something that I'm giving him a lot of credit for because he was viewed as like, you know, one of his downsides was he's been playing for this team, uh, you know, tends to over dribble over there because it was asked. I think he's been very, he has a very good internal clock on if it's not there, let's swing and let's get to something else real quick. And it's, it's that process helping us because God forbid we have eight seconds and we still haven't drawn up a play. We're not very good at that. So it's just the intentionality and his ability to get downhill, even though he's not really finishing that well, but just his ability to get there is helping the team. Shooting cures all also like let's like the they great, shot the really, great elixir. Yeah, the great elixir. <laughs> like you can have breeze. you can have horrible offense, but they shot 24 for 36 today in mid rangers. I like their I like the kinds of shots that they got, the way that they were getting in rhythm. The ones I hate off are off like offensive rebounds where guys just like shoot and they're not in rhythm but I, I thought today like they got penetration they got kickouts they were getting them in transition they were they were good like i i thought that they were playing the way that they should they're a rhythm team they're not like they're just they're not this iso team that can like slow the fucking game down and and do all that nonsense they got to play with each other i believe that they had another really high assist game they've been that's been kind of it a is. theme um in the last four games that they just have like a lot of assists to their field goal. So today 31, 31, 31 that's good. Yeah. That's, that that's, a, that's a good ratio. You know, Jimmy gets to the line 12 times. Nobody yep. else got to the line more than four. Hawkins got three and Rozier got three. Nobody else got a free throw. Bam, not getting a free throw is crazy. Um, Tyler, not getting a free throw. So that's not, normal. Not good. Not good. Not good. Houston, but I don't know. Pablo. They fucking they 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 beat ass today, bro. The the fast break, I really love how much Hyman was pushing the ball. He was he we we know he's good at, at uh uh excuse me uh, at pushing the fast break. But today, every time he got the ball, it was just straight pace to the rim, and that created so much pressure against the Magic that it led to better shooting. And I was just really impressed with how how Bam the little times he was in the post also. He was bullying the magic. There was one post spin he had where he just slammed it. And I'm like, bam, do that. Try to do that every game instead of just taking those mid ranges. You're so much like he's so much better at those post moves than just shooting a, a free throw, in my opinion. When it when he wants to, when he wants, when he wants to post up and, and use his body, he's pretty good at scoring. He is. So the process chat's was great today. Chat's accusing me. Of uh of malplay, uh, <laughs> says, did you like Terry's decisions today? I I did a forty minute breakdown, <laughs> a forty minute teardown, if you will, of Terry Rozier's pick and roll no, decision making. You. No, it was I it was like a why. thirty minute it was like a thirty minute teardown, and then like ten minutes of like I like this. So it wasn't all bad chat. Mm. Uh, somebody said I must be so mad. Somebody else said he must be mad because I haven't mentioned Kyle at all. <laughs> I miss my sweet prince. <laughs> um, Skinny McGee with a great stat from Cooper Moorhead um, says, for as much as Miami's offense has struggled, their half court points per play for cleaning the glass currently rank fifth at 99. That's wild to me. That um, seems like a fake stat. Yeah. As a, <laughs> I as a great, as a great <laughs> poet once said, one of the smartest people I've ever met. I don't believe Do in it. numbers. It's not what the <laughs> quote is. What is the quote? It, Fuck them numbers. No, but it's I don't you know, the the original it's quote it was I don't believe in numbers, and it's yes, the, it, it echoes in that little hangover time <laughs> intro, and then it was fucking no, numbers. It is. Um, yeah, off, so I feel like so offensively, you know, I agree. I like their profile today. They um <laughs> <laughs> wrong joker is on you. No, G is right. Initially, it was you know what G said. Um. Yeah. Also, how does Goins feel about Terry today? Because he's been loud and he's in hiding. You know, yo, Brian, he is Brian. not showing up. Brian, Brian will not be there no matter what. Yeah. yeah. Them offensively today was fun for me. If if and it felt like an awkward group that you might not or that you might like 
hmm, how is this gonna work? But at one point, and for like what felt like a long stretch too, I think it was the end of the first through the first like five minutes of the second. It was G it's G. God damn it. <laughs> it was, um, if they had me out there, that offense ain't scoring. <laughs> Jaime, Jimmy, Kevin, Josh. Duncan, Josh. Yes. And there was just something about like the way that that group kind of moved around one another. You have Kevin who went one for seven, sure, but the seven looks from three were like good looks. So you have a guy that's a pick and, pick and pop threat. You have Jaime who feels like he's kind of rounding kind of back into form. And Jimmy and Jimmy looks for Jaime a lot, even if it's not in um, particularly scoring situations. It's it's situations for Jaime to be near the basket to kind of you know shrink some of the defense a little bit. And, and move the ball. I I don't know, like that group, I don't know kind of what I expected out of it. And then too, you have Duncan who, you know, has his gravity, who's pulling shit from all over the place. They had a, I tweeted it. They did a um a play with featuring Duncan and, and Kevin Love screening from one another. And it was on like the far left kind of yeah. high wing. And it was Duncan setting a flare for Kevin. The ball got tipped. Um, Duncan set the flare for Kevin. Kevin came off the flare, went for a three, got tipped. But as Duncan started to like vacate, like get out of the area, both defenders went with him. And I and I, I just wish that they like stuff like that. I want them to like play with in a bit, you know, bigger of a space. But just the idea you have two pick and pop guys, two guys who, you know, can hit you from three Duncan and his gravity. So you have Duncan as the screener and then going to leave and immediately both defenders just like, oh, shit, kind of went with him. And it like windshield wipered what should have been like a more open Kevin three, but they were like real up against the sideline. I don't know. I felt like they did some cool things and, you know, we don't really have time to fuck around anymore. So you can feel um, Spo like tightening into what are going to be all of his, you know, end of um, end of season rotations. And that one in particular, I thought there was some, some kind of cool stuff with, and bam, and Paolo to your point, bam, if bam wants to go baseline, he has it at least 85% of all of his fake post-ups. Whenever Bingo. he goes middle, it's always into that little fake. At yeah. best, him going middle is what he hopes to be like a up and under or like a up and a step through. If Bam wants to get baseline, he has it so often. And then it was nice seeing him trying to punish um, his mismatches and get guys in foul trouble and take the baseline when he, when he has it. I hope that that's something that's clicked for him. Yep. I hope so too, man. I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna say to your point, like, Bam. When Bam posts up, he's he's not he's not a good post player, guys. He's like, not. He's, that's why I said this. He's not yeah. a great. Post he's a better. Player. He's a better face up player. Yes. So when in that in that play against Wendell, when he faced him up and he didn't just bail out middle mm -hmm. to get a jumper, mm -hmm. it's face up and get to the rim. That should be objective number one at all times. Get to the rim. Most of his points today were just off of like, yes, like he wasn't being Long. asked to score yeah it was just in the flow of the in the flow of the game that's what you want from bam out of bio yes. like we, like we could he he has not been good offensively this year it's fine to say that his shot diet in particular has been what hasn't helped his offense progress in my yeah. opinion but mm -hmm. in a game like today where he's just facing up getting to the rim catching a post but like quick spinning right away because the guy's trying to hedge over the top on that in the first quarter play over paulo Things like that. Like, as soon as Bam tries to get back to the basket and bully somebody, typically those shots, I, I, I would love to to be able to get my hands on those stats, but they're probably not that good. Bam's not a good post up player. It's like well under point for his SM. And then those baseline setups should be even more effective because his primary thing out of that block is to kind of take the jab or take the first two steps to get middle to get to what's a comfortable launching. So him taking the jab, faking middle, and then coming back with the spin baseline, he he has it so often. What I meant was face up, I think. I, I may have yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I it's it okay. was more face up. I got I'll you. I got you. I, and I've said listen, Bond, you you're witness, I've said forever I want him to be more Amari Stoudemire. Face up guy, one dribble to the basket, pick and roll rolling guy you know that that kind of yep. that kind of player and then I the like, jump shots came later i was gonna say in transition step in yep he had that one in transition that was beautiful and that's what i like like if they're gonna yeah. sag so deep you have that in rhythm you know with your dribble he, he had i mean he's you know that's when you really see the package it's not when you're forcing it because when he yes 
he's not like a you know it's, it's funny because they they lived off finesse players for so long i mean dwayne wade lebron you know my even guys like michael beasley you know what i mean like just beautiful kind of silky smooth games and now it's just all mm-hmm. like fucking rugged chris bosh smooth <laughs> it's all fucking <laughs> It's rock, bro. It's all fucking hard edges. You know what yeah. I mean? No, no <laughs> curves and circles. Just fucking squares. Just all angular. Just angular. All angular. That's the plot episode. All angular. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking angles and shit. And listen, it gets the job done, but it ain't pretty. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get in the rhythm. I'm happy, man. Chat's asking yeah. if Pablo locked up the whole show. Absolutely. You weren't here. <laughs> you guys were, for those of you who are now joining the proceeding, Pablo opened the show. His mic was not working. I said, we'll move on. We'll get back to Pablo in a second. <laughs> Lou, I'm talking to Lou. I'm introducing Lou to the show. And Pablo's like, hey, hey, does uh does hey, does, does, hey, can, you can, you, can, you, can you hear me? Is my my mic working? And I'm like, what? <laughs> so he does that once and I ignore him. Then he does it again <laughs> and louder. And, and he like, tapped. It yeah, and he tapped. tapped. And I was like, what? What in God's name? It, it's because I was looking at the settings and then I was seeing if the, the green, the green like buttons were like going back and forth. And I didn't realize we were I forgot we were on live. What's this pile of clothes, Pablo? Pablo. What's going on tapping? there? <laughs> on my ba- it's, it's my winter jacket. Just ignore them. It's fucking cold over here. Uh, come on. Have, have that's one garment? Rich. There's no way that's one garment. No, there's, <laughs> there's my sap, there's Look my at me. sap I, jacket. My area is like... clean. Lou's area is clean. Bond's area is clean and decorated. And you have a laundromat <laughs> and, and a fucking... <laughs> and, and it's so funny. For a, for a seventh grader. I, the no, bars make it like those are like his commissary snacks for real. Like, for real, <laughs> commissary someone came and gave me like, money for commissary. Yeah, please, <laughs> we accept all donations for Pablo. <laughs> it, it'd be funnier and if they were like right. off-brand, like fucking Nature Valleys right. and shit. You know, just, <laughs> just like Sam's Club. You know, just fucking... good and gather from Target and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever the <laughs> generic <laughs> Kroger is. Are there Krogers in DC? I, I, I don't know. I think Kroger is generic. Yeah. I, I don't know. Nah, oh, there's a guy Rice Krispies. There you go. I'm a, I've, 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 I'm a Publix guy. I don't, I don't know where they have Krogers. All these there's products. Fucking Publix here. Fucking all these. <laughs> this, this man. So that all Chad, these. that's why, that's why Pablo's there because he's been, uh, he's not. He, <laughs> we gotta start commissary. I yeah. fucked up, guys. <laughs> Pablo, can, can you can you go find me a, a Tyler Heroes outfit? Because I want to talk about something. they haven't you, they haven't released it yet. They I'm haven't. Re- Tyler fits Lee. ridiculous. He looks like a fucking Blues Clues character. I'm waiting for. We have Jimmy, but I don't. We don't have Tyler yet. I don't need. I want Tyler. I want Tyler who looks like a fucking Blues Clues character. I was gonna. I was gonna say while while we wait for Tyler's iconic fit to come up, can we give some credit to Spo for? Oh, did you see Terry? There you go. Why are you interrupting? Well, Blue is about <laughs> to take off. Lou's about oh, Lou is I, Lou's about to bring an outfit. Us, Lou grabbed the show, took the steering wheel, <laughs> and said, "We're getting back on the road because we detoured a little bit." And Lou, being a good co-host, being He's a cr- smart guy, is like, "You know what? I'm gonna take the wheel, and we're gonna go back this way." And Pablo thunders in. You know what it's like, rush hour two with Chris Tucker, where Jackie <laughs> Chan <laughs> trying to do something. He's like, "He's like, hey, I'm Jackie." Please. Do you understand the words that are coming out of his mouth? No. Is that movie too? Is that movie too old for you? I watched it. Okay, I was about to say. Oh my goodness! I mean, I found out that Pablo was like goo goo gagaing when D Wade won his first championship. I was five years old, right? Yeah, you were a little baby. You were you're pooping your pants, much like Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> and Dallas Man and and, uh, and Mark Cuban. Um, Lou, what was your what Lou, was your spell love? No, the Spo love is just him. <laughs> no, never. Chad, Chad never said Bond's so sick of you. <laughs> no, it's just he completely switched the rotation. Typically, Bam uh, comes out at the six-minute mark. Love comes in, and Jimmy plays the whole first and the whole third. Uh, he swipped, He swapped that, switched that with uh, Jimmy and allowed Jimmy to start the fourth. And start the second, and I feel like mm-hmm. in those runs with the backup units in, that's kind of where we just absolutely mm-hmm. took off because we could key in on just one guy offensively, especially because for some reason the Magic stopped playing Cole Anthony. I don't know what what that issue is. 
with their offense, considering how bad it is. They need some spark. But with just one player offensively that we had to worry about, it was a lot easier. And it was just like just something as simple as just making that switch and literally letting um, Jimmy basically, you know, the, the lineup bond stated like, you know, the Jimmy Hawkes love basically a bunch of spacers around Jimmy Butler and him going up against backups. Shit tends to work out pretty well. And then having Bam come in and just, you know, manage the ship today, he was like plus 32 as well. Like, I just think the rotations, yeah. they need some time to like everybody wanted like Terry to come and just all the answers to be written in stone and everything to look fucking crisp and clear. Brian. Brian. No, I'm <laughs> Brian. <laughs> but no, it, it, on it. Nah, it takes it takes time. Like, you know. Like, even when we had three of the most talented individuals to ever play basketball, shit was rough for 17 games, people. Like, it was really rough for almost damn near the whole year. But, like, let's keep it honest. Like, it takes it takes a minute for everybody oh, to Oh, they were it. fighting for their lives against the fucking Pacers in the second <laughs> round. I'm saying. Yeah, they were. It looked oh over. God, I mean, let's not forget. It looked <laughs> it over. It was bleak. <laughs> it, that shit was bleak, bro. Patience, baby. That's all it is. Just a little yeah. bit of patience goes a long way. You know what I'm saying? How much do you guys think that that rotational thing was they were all healthy? Because, like, Spo made one substitution. He put, like, four dudes in. And I was like, whoa, yep. that hasn't happened in forever. <laughs> it felt like I was off. playing 2K, bro. I was, was like, what? Off, I was like, do we have that many guys? <laughs> Are we watching Kentucky? Remember when Kentucky <laughs> would just go the full five-man rotation? Yeah, no, but no, I – that's – it's uh, – being able to, like, hold hold ground, like, hold the fort, and then – have a group that can kind of not really play one style and another group play, play the a different, but kind of so. And then like the Jimmy, Jaime, Duncan, Kevin, John, they they feel like a group that likes playing together, that likes kind of running around and being with one another. I don't know. I just feel like chemistry wise. And then you bring back in your like Bam, Tyler group. And so we know that's probably your pick, your pick and roll heavy group. And then you have the people that orbit around that. Whereas the other group with Jimmy and the bench is kind of, you know, not a free for all, but a free for all in like a, a good way, but like a good, like steady way where <clears throat> kind of both sides can like get to their shit without being in the other side's way. I don't know. It feels like a, a good way to sustain a, a particular type of momentum throughout. And then you get to the fourth and then you, you know, load up on who you need to load up to get it done. We shouldn't get used to this, though. Jim, Hello. someone's definitely not playing tomorrow. We're not, are, you think we're going to have another f- a full squad game tomorrow? With their There's team no mate? reason to not. Someone's going to have a fucking <laughs> sore calf. <laughs> Jimmy's nah. not playing tomorrow. I don't think Jimmy's playing They're tomorrow. They're playing tomorrow, man. Jimmy Fuck better that. play tomorrow, dog. You're it's... about to get fucking a week and a half off. I yeah, want there's... everybody... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk get, shit, Jim. Talk get shit, there, Jim. bro. Fucking get there. Yeah. They I better play. Know. You know why the fuck they better play tomorrow? Because they're not. They're still in the fucking playing. So they yes. they're playing in tomorrow's game they as well. Got a, they don't got the luxury of being like, eh, I'm not coming into work today. Hell no. Hell no. Not after they lost like 17 games. It felt like. And then yeah. shout out to Jimmy too. Since the meeting, you know, everybody was like, Jimmy, basically we need you to do more. And he said it. <laughs> and then he woke up. Spo didn't, Spo didn't say shit. Else. I'm, I'm sure Spo had so much more he wants. It seemed like a, like a god finally. Spo was just like. I agree. <laughs> and then <laughs> you've seen Jimmy, you know, just kind of take the onus and and his energy was was palpable tonight. And it has been for, you know, last two or three games. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy was doing more except that last game where he did it. But other than that. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. Just just you know, slot was he nine ago. for twelve that's, today? That's, that was the best. Yeah, he was something he was something crazy. I know Josh shot six. He was <laughs> six for nine. He was six for nine. Six for nine. Nice. Nine nine yeah. shots, nice. twenty-three points. Oh my fucking goodness. I have an update. Uh, on Brian Goins and Terry Rozier. Brian Uh-oh. says he's got to put it together for more than one game. If he can show up <laughs> against the Bucks and Celtics before all-star break, then maybe I'll take a break from my negative tweets. That's not happening. Frankie responds, pour it on B-Money. He needs the pressure. I agree with Frankie. <laughs> I'm going to flame emoji that. I, I agree with Frankie. Frank, <laughs> flame Frank, emoji Frank, Frank, Frankie's, Frankie's right. I agree. Frank, Frankie's right. Um <laughs> Still no update on Tyler Hero. Wes Goldberg yeah, has failed like us you. as a journalist. Um, <laughs> honestly, it, what are you there for, bro? You're there to take pictures of <laughs> athletes. So you basically have to produce our show, Wes. And and the fact that you did it, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed. 
David David Ramil would have. So, you know, I, I, hope you're, I hope you're happy. Now the audience misses out on where's on the Blues Clues ass Tyler Hero outfit. Just remember, just rem- remember my words when it gets posted later. But man, great win for the Heat. Great show for us. I know I had a lot of fun. I love I love laughing after wins. And hopefully they can put stuff together, man. Again, three and one in their last four after they lost seven in a row. You know, that, that Kings game was a super get right game for them. And obviously they followed the Clippers, but they put good performances on the board. They have some tough games to close out their schedule tomorrow on the second night of a back to back is not easy. But yeah. you know, that's something Spurs, that they got Celtics, Bucks, Sixers, Pelicans. Well, Pelicans is the first game after All Star. That's so. the first game Spurs, after Spurs, Celtics. Game. Yep, Spurs, Celtics, Bucks, Sixers. Yeah, I mean, Oof, damn. It's, Oof, so awkward. next week, I mean, awkward. Sunday, Boston, Tuesday, Bucks, mm-hmm. back to back, Wednesday, yep. Philly. <clears throat> brutal, brutal, brutal stretch of games. Embiid list, Philly. No Embiid. That no is Embiid. true. That is, that is true. No Embiid. I but do. Tyrese Maxey so and Tobias Harris are still playing, um, and they tend to give us the bids. I really, I really hope Kyle Lowry's not on that, that Sixer team. That's <laughs> If God, if you're listening, you know, I, I just I, want somebody to think about me as much as G thinks about Kyle. Lowry. I've seen what you've done for others. If you're up there. I don't ask for a lot. I really don't. <laughs> I just ask that he's not a Nick or a Sixer. I'll take anything. I'll take a Magic. I'll take make a him Laker. a Laker, God. I'll, I'll take a Laker. I'll, I'll take a Laker. That's that's bargaining. Please, <laughs> I beg you. Please. Um, Thanks, guys. Good bon, show. Bon will yeah. rock with you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I do have the show tomorrow. Uh, bon bon will rock with you too. tomorrow. Pablo's producing. And uh, I will be back Thursday for what will probably be the most boring tread deadline show of all time. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see. All report, early reports say that ain't nothing <laughs> happening. Woj, <laughs> I think Woj said today, I don't know, man. It's, it's looking pretty looking pretty quiet. Wait, what, what time that, is the deadline show? Um, we don't know. I want to go to yoga. Let, let's produce this. <laughs> <laughs> My yoga is from 7 to 8.30. I would like to go to yoga. So I would like like a 9 p.m. show. Is that I'll too late? Too. I, <sighs> should I skip yoga? What should I do? Don't no, go look, to yoga. Look, look, man. Pretty shout late. out to... We had 100 plus people in here. 9 o'clock is fine. Yeah. Just come really give the people a show, G. I, I'm yeah. I'm down for nine o'clock. I'm down I'm to down come too. to do the nine o'clock show after yoga. I just want to make sure that that chat's okay and you guys are okay. So, so right, we'll plan for a nine p.m. trade deadline special, and it would be funny if they do nothing, uh, and then we'll just come off for twenty minutes and laugh at how Pat Riley hasn't woken up uh, since he traded for Terry Rozier. So love that you guys. Him, like literally, did, was he literally asleep at one of the last games? Bro, it looked bad, <laughs> and it's funny because Alonzo looked way more asleep than he did. <laughs> Alonzo, I'm pretty sure was asleep. They just want to take naps, man. They just. I understand. Me too. Listen, it's bedtime. Get us out of here. Uh, love you, chat. Love you, Deuces, guys. guys. See you.